Welcome back to MG, Southwest Studios, and the show. Happy holidays to you. This is going to be a very specific video for very specific people. Today we're going to be talking about Jonathan Franzen's new novel, Crossroads. Jonathan Franzen is probably best known for his 2001 novel, The Corrections, and how Oprah Winfrey endorsed that. And he went on to talk shit and say he kind of wished she hadn't endorsed it because, it I don't know what, it took the zeal out of it or made it less badass or something like that. But Franzen is one of my favorite current contemporary authors, um, fiction writers. So his latest Crossroads takes place in the 1970s. And as is typical for Franzen, it centers around an American family. And in this case, the head of the family is Russ, the preacher. And he has these kids, Becky, Clem, and a couple others. And I won't go too much into plot synopsis. Because as I said, this is pretty specific. If you aren't aware of Franzen, hope, you know, maybe you'll learn something. But otherwise, this is for the Franzen fans. Uh, one of my favorite novels by him is Purity. I want to say it came out around 2013, something like that. And that's about a young woman and a Wikipedia founder type, Julian Assange type named Andreas Wolf. And I don't know, Franzen is just a very good writer. He kind of came up in the same generation as David Foster Wallace, Brett Easton Ellis, and these types. As I say, Crossroads is very similar to The Corrections and even Freedom, um, which is also about a Midwest American family. Um, and in the case of Crossroads, it takes place in New Prospect. And I'm not even sure if it says the state, maybe Michigan. or Again, it's Midwest. You know, Franzen is a Minnesota boy, if I recall correctly. And it takes place around this family, and it's quite a religious book. And it's similar, as I said, to these other ones. But is it better? Well, that's tough to say. You know, it's kind of as good as Freedom, but not as good as The Corrections. Um, one thing I do like about it is it really deals with when family members are not talking to one another which makes it kind of a, I don't know, during the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, a lot of times you have grudges with your family members, but you patch it up somehow, or you dip your toe in the water of family communication. But there's a lot of resentment and stuff from the past that everybody has to face around the holidays, if they decide to talk to their mom, their dad, their siblings again. If there's beef there. So keep all that in mind when you're reading the new friends and novel Crossroads. Now, one could argue this book is just too religious. This is really friends and um, exploring religion in a way that he hadn't before. And I think as he gets older, he's coming to terms with God, whatever that means to him, as perhaps we all do when we face our own mortality. But let me think about what I like about this. I think certain sections involving Rick Ambrose, who's kind of the cool youth pastor, and the conflict with Russ versus Rick Ambrose, and how Russ... He's kind of this square older pastor, you know, um, and he also has this kind of love affair, but I won't go into plot too much, but just the conflict between the cool younger pastor and the older pastor and the popularity contest that ensues, all the stuff in Arizona with the Navajo Indians, that's really interesting. This is kind of about the conflict of humanitarians and liberal Christian types who try to do good. But really, is that just for their own selfishness? You know, where does Russ and his wife, where do they end up at the end of the story? Are they better off or are they talking to their kids? <clears throat> you know? 
Where did all of Russ's religion get him? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Clem, with his journeys to the Andes, where is he? Chile or Argentina by the end of the book? By the end of the book? What are you, drunk, MG? By the end of the book is very similar to one of the characters in the corrections, the oldest brother, also going off, and also similar to Joey in Freedom, um, going to Bolivia or Brazil. Franzen is always sending his characters to these far-flung locations, you know, also in purity, and that's fun. So the character of Perry, who's kind of a middle sibling, I think, I think he's an absolutely hilarious character because he always kind of talks like this. And he's like kind of a goth from the 70s who speaks in overly elaborate sentences. Sister, my dear, if you could please just give me a respite from your intolerable uh, dominance, it would surely be appreciated. This is the way that Perry talks. Really obnoxious, pretentious. But anyway, Perry gets addicted to drugs. Um, cocaine. And, and the way that Franzen writes Perry's addiction is so realistic. Um, I've been there. And he's having delusions of grandeur. He thinks he can read everybody's thoughts. He thinks that he's God. And that everyone is his children who will do what he thinks and says. And everything will go as planned. Meanwhile, he just puts his family in a huge monetary debt. And it all goes back to the inheritance that Becky got at the beginning from her aunt and how that kind of rippled through the family. And this is all set in 1974. So I'm sorry if I only picked up energy at the end of this, but the story, you know, is 15 hours of listening on an audiobook. And I did so over the period of probably a month or two between all my other audiobooks. And yes, I, I did like this a lot. You know, what's different here? The setting, mid-1970s. But yeah, it's typical Franzen. You know, you could say it's kind of white families bitching at each other, is what I was thinking. So if you like Franzen, I would say this is definitely worth your time. Uh, make a good holiday gift. And where it really worked for me is just these family members realizing they don't really need to talk to each other if they don't feel respected by one another. And that's good. Take your own life back. Allow people in your life who deserve it. Love and care is a two-way street. Yeah, but at the holidays, also try to mend those fences. So that's my review of Franzen's Crossroads. And I would give it a solid B+. Plus. But, hmm. Yeah, it's kind of typical Franzen with more religion. So, thanks for listening. See you next time. Have a great day.